What does a place mean to you, uncle? They can cut up the map, but the stories carry on moving across. You can't stop the stories. As a child, my father had a geography textbook published in 1932. In it, Lao was erased from the surface of the earth. Out of amnesias spring stories. I used to think of a place as something that never changed. But now I think of it as something that never stops changing. My son told me about a phantom island. It was discovered centuries ago and appeared on maps all over the world. Then some scientists noticed that it was missing. They went to search for it even sailed right through it. It wasn't there. They undiscovered it. Place, he wrote, is change. We arrest that mutability only with our minds. She understood his words that light is never cast over immobile places. Passing through the landscapes, it creates the places we see between mist and rain. Uncle, the frigate bird can soar for weeks without stopping. How? By flying into a cloud. It's the only bird that is known to deliberately fly into a cloud. White cumulus. Above the ocean, they form in places where warm air rises from the sea surface. The bird soars on the warm air stream to the top of the cloud. Soaring in a cloud. So many people left, crossed the river. Whole streets disappeared. There were killings. People were frightened and spreading the fear. There's not enough salt in this soup. Our area, the old town, was completely empty. Not many people left. That's propaganda. Many people did not leave. They came and emptied the house. They told me I had to do the seminar. That brought on my asthma. Great uncle was stopped by the police. They found a small piece of opium. He was addicted. It was like aspirin to him. He was afraid because he trembled. Did he want to leave? No. He wouldn't have been able to get his opium abroad. A cousin drove us out to Huanhin on the bank of the Mekong. We negotiated with a boatman to take us across the river. That's the way it is over there. You have to negotiate. Always. No fixed prices. We took very few possessions, just the essentials. On the other side, in Thailand, cousins showed us to the camp. Is the Mekong dangerous, uncle? No, no. I know the Mekong. It's not dangerous. There are Nagas. What are Nagas? They are sea monsters protectors of the Lao state. 
They have many heads. Have you ever seen one? Yes, several times. Are the Nagas dangerous, uncle? They show their displeasure of the government is not good. We used to swim in the Mekong, but there have been deaths in recent years, and now the government has banned swimming. Was it the Nagas killing the people? The government has outlawed swimming in the Mekong because the river is deep. The current is strong, and the Nagas are dangerous. You have to think in two ways at the same time. It's where two rivers meet that is dangerous. There you must feed the spirits so they don't become angry. There exists a Latin term in international law for unclaimed land. Terra nullius. Terra, earth, nullus, no one. A tiny sliver of Africa sits between Egypt and Sudan. Birtawil is the last truly unclaimed land on earth. 2,060 square kilometers of apatride land with three mountains and a number of streams. Were you afraid, Auntie, when you crossed the Mekong? I was afraid because I trembled. Where are your roots, Auntie? Roots are branches in the earth. Branches are roots in the air. You are more than you think you are. Do you know the Lao National Anthem, Auntie? Of course. The melody is the same, but they changed the words. I don't know the words. I can just sing the tune. Sing the tune, Auntie. In Lao, a new past is being remembered in the present. I don't remember the present one. When I was growing up in the 50s, most people in Lao didn't know the name of their country. Now, we search for an eternal, essential Laoness. Do you like reading, auntie? Speaking is better. It's easier. Is it not different? I don't know, I don't know. Lao poems started off as spoken, then written and rewritten again and again, changing all the time. Sometimes getting bigger, sometimes getting smaller. That's the way it is. Does it matter that the poem changes each time? Of course not. That's the point. It should change. Does the author stay the same? Not really. I don't know. We don't think about authors. The poem is the poem. It doesn't need an author. It is written by no one and everyone. She imagined the flight paths of all the birds in the world. A web of 100 billion filaments. She thought of the hummingbird that can hover almost indefinitely, only rarely touching the earth, visiting a thousand flowers a day for nectar and remembering every one of them. And of the bird, known only as B-95 
for the tag on its leg that had flown more miles than separate the earth and the moon. Talk to me of distance, distance and closeness. It is so easy to love a country from a distance, as an image. She remembered Mahmoud's words about the young Palestinians who hanker after a country whose smell they don't know. Why, she thought, do nations always insist upon their age rather than their youth? Why do they insist that the fragments and scraps they are composed of are seamless. There is no evolutionary reason why bird song should be beautiful. Why do birds sing when they do not need to? They have found dopamine in birds' brains, she read. Could it be they sing for pleasure? Her father told her of the man who had spent ten years of his life living amongst the birds, following them. His wish was to see the world as a bird did. He followed the birds not to observe, but to evade the immutable position of the observer. He whispered to her too, that silence might just be on the verge of extinction. He had met an acoustic ecologist, a militant for silence. He had traversed the globe three times in search of quiet. Have you ever seen a ghost, auntie? The haunting's stronger when you don't see the ghost. Dogs see ghosts more readily than us. Does the government believe in ghosts? Sometimes. No and yes. The government teaches us that in the old political system there were many things that were not practiced according to the truth. Ghosts are seen as backwards, but we still do the rituals. These are permitted now. Do you think that ghosts are backwards, auntie? Spirits come when things are not resolved. That's how ghosts behave. My friend, he disappeared. Disappeared? Maybe the spirits took him. Sometimes the spirits trigger the bombs to detonate. Can you tell me how, auntie? Is there a reason to talk rather than stay silent? Sometimes you talk like a spy. It's important to know that we don't know everything. Some things are better not known. I can't say, but you can hear. 
Yes, auntie, I can hear. Do you remember the bombings, uncle? Everyone knows that Laos is the most heavily bombed country in history. A plane load of bombs every eight minutes, 24 hours a day for nine years. About one ton of ordnance dropped per citizen, although officially Laos is a neutral country. About 10% of the population were killed during the secret war and many more since. It's a slow violence. The bombs will keep on exploding for centuries. That's the way it is. Uncle, the academic wrote that the air war in Laos was the progenitor for warfare in the 21st century. Ham Jap, don't touch, was the first word that the children learned. They often just dumped the bombs on us because the planes could not land with bombs still on board. We lived in caves for years. Most of our land around here has unexploded bombs buried in it, as far as 12 meters down, rice fields, orchards, schools. It's under us everywhere. Entire villages are built from bomb waste. We even make our spoons and forks from it. Here we laugh and say, we feed ourselves with the American bombs. Often they built without clearing properly. My brother built his cafe on top of a massive unexploded bomb. He just lives with it. That's how it is. The bombs have become part of our land and our lives. Our villages are known in Lao as Ban Labad, bomb villages. Some people refuse to give up their unexploded bombs without being compensated. They have value, you know. Dealers come over from Vietnam to buy them as scrap metal. 10 cents a pound, and a large shell can bring in 30 to 40 dollars. It's business. Did you know that the Lao word for fruit, nuai, also means bomb? We named the different kinds of bombs after fruit. We forage for bombs the way we forage for fruit. I often wonder if the Americans designed the bombs to look like fruit, so we would pick them up. Uncle, the ethnographer wrote that you live in a bomb ecology, that bombs are another kind of wild fruit here. Maybe she's right. The war is still here. It's part of your landscape. La Bird MacNad. Pineapple bomb. The bells for our new temple were made from empty bomb casings. When you look at them, do you see bombs or bells? I see both at the same time. I told you, think two ways at the same time. Don't be fooled by a horizon. 
It's interesting that the Americans call the war the Vietnam War, while the Vietnamese call it the American War. The only name given to what happened here in Laos is the Secret War. It has no real name. The diplomat referred to it as the other war. It was a sideshow, he said. A CIA sideshow. Do you think that it's a good thing that the war has no name, uncle? When the buffalo fight, it's the grass that suffers. Now our own government is stockpiling anti-personnel mines. She heard how, on the first day of the July Revolution, clock towers around Paris were shot at, pour arrêter le jour, to hold the day. A new calendar was born. Clocks changed from having 12 hours to having 10. Seven-day weeks became 10-day weeks. The king had gone, religion had gone. The republic was proclaimed and time itself restarted. The months were renamed to align with the elements, the seasons and the harvests. We thought they would reset our calendar to year zero. The hummingbird, she remembered, can hover almost indefinitely. History, he wrote, is something that did not happen, written by someone who was not there. She remembered the traditional village with paid entry. 
where people were employed to occupy the minority houses, acting out their ethnicity. In the words of the Irish writer, who said that the next commemoration of her nation's history might take the form of raising a monument to amnesia and forgetting where they put it. Nations are not eternal. They have a beginning and they will have an end. We should think more about the world, he felt. Remember and forget. She gave us a small photocopied picture of the prince to place at the head of our bed to keep away the malevolent spirits that had caused my nightmares. The prince was sexit, she explained. Bullets could not harm him. He had the ability to change his form and could transform himself into a fish. The proof of this is that at a conference with the French, at the time of the Free Lao movement, he became angry with them, changed himself into a fly and flew out of the window. He could go for days without sleeping, walk in the rain without getting wet, and when he wanted to, could fly up and sleep in the crown at the top of the forest. His memory is permitted. Forget and remember. Lyrebirds, she heard, can sing two melodies simultaneously. In New South Wales in the 1930s, a settler who played the flute had a pet lyrebird who was able to mimic the tunes he heard. Eventually, the bird was released back into the wild. Decades later, a park ranger recorded the song of one of the lyrebirds in his grounds. It sounded like a performing flautist. The settler's tune had been passed down generations of lyrebirds. Nearly 100 years later, the flute song can still be heard. She thought of the woman of aristocratic extraction, living in exile, who devoted her time to a meticulous reconstruction of her family tree to demonstrate to her offspring their prestigious line. In so doing, she rescued herself from class relegation, honored her parents and ancestors, and inscribed herself and her children into a chain of debt. Henceforth, they're indebted, shackled to their illusory rank. Leave what is certain. Is everyone a member of the party, uncle? No. It's by invitation only. Were you invited to join? Birds have two voice boxes. They can sing duets with themselves. When two things are parallel, they exist side by side and relate to each other across a gap. They don't have to meet to know one another. There's something between them. Can you describe the sound of the bombs, uncle? 
Words don't contain everything, you know. The word bomb is not the same as feeling a bomb detonate. I feel, therefore I think, therefore I am, she thought. She read that at the bomb point, right where it detonates, is silence. You can hear nothing. It's just sonic energy, inaudible, but it deafens you. It only becomes noise much further out at the fringes of the blast. Deafening silence. She remembered his words. Let the world be without name for a time. Let things listen to what they are. In silence. In their own time. In their own way. She read that in order to expand their land mass, countries import sand in massive quantities, dredged and transported thousands of miles. One place diminished, the other expanded, reclaiming the sea. Culture, she thought, is never bordered. Modern nation states like to imagine that it is and they like to imagine themselves as timeless entities. She thought of the swift, rarely touching the surface of the planet, spending most of its life aloft for up to nearly a year, living in flight. Twice a day, at dawn and dusk, climbing to high altitudes so that it may sleep in slow descent. What lies one meter below the streets of London is less well known than Antarctica. Endless, the series of things without name. Auntie, what was it like moving into the apartment on the seventh floor in Paris? I didn't like people walking on my head. That's forbidden. At first, I was very worried that there was nowhere higher to seat the monks when they came. But after a while, we found different ways to do it. We arranged the mats according to the status of the person. We made maps on the floor. When we arrived, my friend had a baby girl. She was so scared of losing her, she made her a hat, embroidered it in bright colors. Seen from above, it would fool the spirits into mistaking the child for a flower, and so not swooping down to steal her. Are you afraid, auntie? I am afraid because I tremble. I am not afraid.
I looked at the surface of the sun and I saw elephant skin. They informed the authorities that all 12 of their children had been born on the 1st of January in consecutive years. Her sister had been pregnant when she arrived and gave birth in an American hospital. Seeing the words baby boy on the plastic identification band on her infant's wrist, the mother assumed that this was the name he had been given by the doctors. The child still carries that name today. Speak, but don't split off no from yes. Give your say this meaning too. Give it the shadow. Speaks true, who speaks shadow. Uncle, we bought two green-headed sparrows in a little bamboo cage and released them. The monk said that in our next life we will come back as caged birds and the sparrows will set us free. No, they are like homing pigeons. They will fly back to the vendor and he will sell them again. 